أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة النسان يفقه قولي My dear students, brothers and sisters I welcome all of you with the Islamic readings Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May peace and blessings of Almighty God be upon you all Don't worry, today I'm not going to give you Islamic lecture <laughs> The lecture is about uh, Karate actually the history, philosophy and concept of Karate. So, inshallah we will go uh, very short, don't worry. I have tried to make it very short. But, uh, of course, it's about history and concept. So, it will take time. Let's do time. Just be patient and follow. Actually, we are doing this thing to... We are doing practicing, uh, I think, three months now. And uh, mashallah, you have, you all have learned good techniques, and uh, most of you are sixth Q, orange bell. And inshallah, others also will going to take their grading uh, Tuesday, right? Yeah. So knowing the techniques is a different thing, and knowing the concept or the history about this uh, art is something else so we should know what we are doing we should know that, that how it came from where it came and uh, what is the meaning of what we are doing so today the class is of that only inshallah and inshallah you will enjoy so see what karate do means Okay. The word kara means empty and te means hand and do means the way. So karate do means the way of empty hand. Means when we perform this art or when we practice this art, we don't carry any weapon in our hand. It's without any <coughs> weapon. Okay, weapons merge into this art. How we'll talk about that also. But originally, it's an art of just fist and kicks. What is karate do? Karate is an art of self-defense and character development. Now there will be questions of how character development is there in this. It's a martial arts. Martial means military and art, you know all that. So when we do it, we do it with disciplines. When we do it, we do it systematically. And we should know what is the purpose of that. It is used only for self-defense. If we know this art, we should not just go out and fight with anyone. Yeah, you are thinking of that, right? <laughs> no? Okay, good. <laughs> we should go and just be normal. If someone attacks her, try to avoid it. If you cannot, then only you fight. And you know, you are doing this since three months. All the katas it starts with what? Block. First deflect and then attack. So, when we do karate, we try to avoid the fight. Then why we learn fight? So there is a very old saying it says that if you want peace be prepared for war okay if you know karate if you know how to fight then people will not mess up with you people will go to the people who are not strong who are weak they can fight with them they can do anything with them but if they know that okay if we'll mess around with this guy, then 
never trouble trouble till trouble troubles you so nobody will mess with you right good okay it is also a striking art using punching kicking knee strike elbow strike open hand techniques knife hand block uh, knife hand strikes all this thing is used again to block and to counter attack right historically and in some modern styles grappling and throwing techniques are also there <coughs> karate practitioners are called what karateka karateka means student of karate, karate or practitioner of karate even i am karateka because i also practice karate now history of karate the origins of karate can be traced through centuries from modern <coughs> japan via okinawa to china and possibly to india in 4th or 5th century bc it goes there how we'll know that thing see if you'll see here there is india it went from here to china and from china to okinawa and from okinawa to japan now when we are learning it, we are learning it from japan because in in the end uh, it completed there in japan you can say the name of karate how it came we'll talk about that how from india it went this yoga has an effect upon karate you know when we do karate the breathing technique the breathing pa uh, pattern of that <coughs> it develops our diaphragm and every uh, you say blows any execution of any techniques it comes from yeah. diaphragm what we say kia it is the outcome of the power which we generate in our diaphragms and it comes out so that is breathing techniques breath in and breath out and it was uh, designed or you can say it was born in 5th fifth, fifth century BC in Indus Valley tradition says that there was a monk called Buddhi Dharma this Buddhi Dharma of course when uh, this Buddhist people when they are doing meditation dhyana, how to control your, their body in all the weathers and that that was the yoga which they have learned there and from there he traveled to China and in Hunan province of China he have built a temple called Shaolin Zoo and this Shaolin Zoo he, he is also a, a founder of Zen Buddhism he have created this Buddhism Zen Buddhism called Zen Buddhism and when his disciples they gathered there when he felt that his students or disciples are weak and not capable of doing the hana or uh, they were not patients and they were not able to carry on Buddhism or Zenism so he developed a pattern of yoga with local combat called Kimpo he mixed it up and he developed the pattern of fighting breathing building their bodies strong and when they were ready they went out of Shaolin and they spread Zen Buddhism as well as their martial arts what they have learned there it spread in whole China but you know China is a big country like India is also a big country but China is very big place to place 
time to time the weather changes the stru structure of body changes structure of uh, living it changes so in southern parts of china southern people of china you will see that they are very teddy and small people their hands are very strong they work as a farmer so obviously their hands were more uh, say powerful or agile than their legs because their legs were very short so there they developed hand techniques combining this uh, yeah. kimpo they have built their hand techniques in the northern side of china the people are nomadic horsemen they were tall taller than the people of southern place and they they were rider horse riders so their legs were very strong and they have developed the techniques with legs and you can see the outcome of that taekwondo because it's uh, in the northern side of china <coughs> taekwondo the uh, you can say korean karate they are 80% depend on kicking why because they, they were influenced from northern chinese buddhi dharma what he have created was the seed of kung fu and karate now we can see that it is very different art within but you can say it is there are root uh, you, branches of the same root it goes to shaolin temple or to buddhi dharma who was migrated from where from india so like that it goes to its history goes to india too there is a chain of islands called ryukyu islands from japan southwards it goes to you can say taiwan formosa it is also come it is natural stepping stone of merging of chinese and okinawan and japanese culture the migrators used to come from uh, traders you can say they used to come from china to okinawa to sell their things to trade with the people there many people have settled down there in this okinawa the biggest uh, you can say island of this ryukyu is okinawa they settled down there and they exchange their goods uh, culture and as well as fighting techniques in okinawa also they were having some of course everywhere th we have fi fighting techniques every people fight and protect themselves but when they learned it from chinese people because uh, there was little bit of difference between okinawan people and chinese people okinawan people they were having uh, hard techniques the chinese they were having soft techniques in a circle way they used to practice it merged there and okinawa is not very big uh, you can say city means it's a big city and there are parts of okinawa different ports of okinawa where different type of techniques were developed these three parts are shori neha and tomari so where the art in shori was developed it was shori te means hands of shori neha te hands of neha and tomari they means hands of tomari all together it was called okinawa te or you can say todi te means china's hand actually the, uh, there was a dynasty in china was called uh, tang dynasty and it was called tang te means uh, hands of tang tang means loosely you can say that it was china so chinese i should have heard that was shorin ryu and shorai ryu ryu means uh, school so shorin ryu and shorai ryu became base of 
वॉट टू कम एस कराते फ्रॉम ओकिनावा ते टू कराते सो इन 1917 ए लीडर ऑफ वन स्टाइल हिज नेम वॉज फनाकोशी जिचिन और जिचिन फनाकोशी ही वॉज इन्वाइटेड बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एजुकेशन टू जापान there was a emperor of uh, japan he came to okinawa for sightseeing and all that thing and he saw this kind of art so he he told him to come and give a presentation there and he went and he gave presentations to elite people there in ministry of education and it was received so well that in 1923 jochen fanakoshi went there and settled down there in japan and he started teaching his okinawa te or तो दीते और तंगते फर्स्ट ही वॉज हायरिंग द लोकल मार्शल आर्ट्स हॉल्स लाइक जूडो हॉल्स और किंडो हॉल्स किंडो इज ऑल्सो शोर्ट फाइटिंग टेक्निक देन ही ओपन हिज ओन दोजो एंड हिज पेन नेम Fanakoshi's pen name was Shoto. Shoto, it comes from pine tree. You know pine tree. It is strong and lenient. So Shoto was the pen name of Jochen Fanakoshi because he was strong and he was lenient. So his hall was called Shoto Kan. Kan means the house of Shoto. And in the same year, in 19, he opened it in 1936. and at that that time there was anti chinese sentiments was growing in japan because after that they were going for the war in the near future of that 1945 so he thought that it will be better to abandon the name of tang so from there the name karate was merged in he changed the name from tangte or okinawa te to karate you can see this for us this is jichen fanakoshi the father of modern karate because he gave that name and he changed techniques and he brought it to japan and from there it spread so he is regarded as the father of modern karate and when he went there all other um you can say masters also followed him to japan like uh, chujin miyagi gojoryo karate do style was created by him and kenwa mabuni shiteryo karate of style was uh, and there were many other i, uh, I only uh, showed you here three and there are many other teachers as you said that you have seen that uh, karate kid right Yeah, you have seen Miyagi. You know Miyagi, Mr. Miyagi was there in karate. Yes. Yeah. He said in that movie that his lineage is from Chujin Miyagi. In that movie, and he showed his art in that movie was Gujarati. Okay. And there was um, another master. He was a he was also a great master. His uh, name is uh, Masutetsu Oyama. Yeah. He. came from he was actually korean guy his name was some something else but he traveled from korea to china and from china to finally to japan and he started learning shotokan and then he went to gojerio and at that time as i said that uh, people were not accepting racism was there so there this uh, korean man he changed his name and he became japanese they were not accepting him very well but he was practicing there with them then he created his own art a style called kyokushin kai kyokushin kai you can see that they fight that they break like that so in that movie karate kid the other man who was teaching his uh, students was kyokushin kai style no mercy no mercy i think just beat and all that things so these were all great masters of uh, karate now karate training when they started doing karate 
they built how to train people. So karate training is divided into three aspects. And is kihon. What is kihon? Basic training drills, pair work or solo exercises, which you are doing. And katas, katas means forms, is a fighting against imaginary enemies. It is a fixed sequence moves created by all these great masters. Used in competitions also, individually and team. And then third is kumite. Kumite means sparring, fighting. And it also have means like gradually we do uh, like kihon kumite, then we go for sanbon kumite. Kihon kumite means five step uh, kumite. Sanbon kumite is three step kumite. And then we go for a pon kumite, one step. And then geo kumite. Geo kumite means free fighting. Okay, grading structure, how it goes, you all know. Again, we'll talk about that. The, your process through karate is measured by means of grading system. How you do this grading system? It divides up the school syllabus into eight, nine, or ten parts called Q grades. Okay, <coughs> each grade is identified with a color belt. Originally, there were only three colors belts white green and brown and other colors were added to give recognition to people because white belt was going up to half of the way and then green belt and from green belt to yeah brown belt they cannot okay they think okay this green belt is means green belt but his practice was more than that so that's why the other color belts were added to that. Every school have his own system of color belt. Ours is as follow. We have white belt till uh, till eighth Q. We have white belt. The yellow belt have seventh Q. Orange belt sixth Q. Green belt fifth. Blue is fourth. Purple is third. And second queue is red belt, and first queue is brown belt, and first dan is black belt. And that is not the end of karate, but when you do, when you reach to black belt, that means uh, you have done your uh, matric, then also you have to study more. So this is the thing. <coughs> what is the uniform of uh, karate? It is called karate gi. And here you can see OB. OB means belt. How to tie your belt? You can also karate greetings. Okay, uh, karate greeting. There is also means after we ray, we sit, and then they bow like uh, sajda that I don't do in mine. I don't prefer to do that thing and in my dojo I'm not doing that thing. Okay, but up to sitting it's good. Up to mogzu means meditation, we can do that thing, no problem. Bowing is okay. Eye and eye. Yeah. No problem. It's slightly different with their traditional way of doing. Now there's body weapons. We are all using arms all the techniques, you know, all our techniques, we use all these parts as a weapon. And this leg weapon, he's a Haisoko, Kushi, Kakato, Sokuto. I'm always telling you to do it from there. Okay? Now, We'll take a break here. If you have any questions, any corrections, any comments, please.